And a very, and I can say advisedly, warm welcome to the first edition of SAPeople.com for 2023. Have you managed to get yourself into saying 2023 yet, Jennifer Baxter? No, I keep saying 2024. I've, I've just jumped ahead. <laughs> Anyhow, that Hello, is the... Mella, Mella. The lovely blonde sitting over in Antibes in France. I am Melanie Walker sitting in Johannesburg and welcome to it. And we're going to be chatting about all the things that are making the news headlines, some of which we wish weren't making the headlines, and some really good news besides. Now, um, first of all, I hope everybody had a really fabulous festive season, a great new year that we've all hit the year running. A little bit difficult when you don't have anything running, though, at home most of the time. Problematic. <laughs> I can't believe it. So, so this week they announced um, a stage six load shedding. I remember, first of all, it was nightly, and I thought, wow. And, and by nightly, they meant from four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. And then the next day, they said, oh, no, actually, day and night, continuously yep. until further notice. So what does that actually mean? What does it look like? What do you, how, do you, how does it change your life? What? Well, I think we've had this discussion before. I don't get too stressed out about it because um, I generally have enough light to keep me going. So I just get into reading a book and I've also downloaded a lot of stuff from Showmax onto my phone or onto, well, I can't use my laptop at the moment because I have to replace the battery. Oh, it's the beginning of a new year. A new car has got to come. No, we'll rather fix the old car, fix the laptop, fix the desktop. No. Can yes. I tell you what happened to me talking about cars and old oh, cars? Your car caught on fire in England. Yes, we left early in the morning for Christmas to get to Canterbury to miss the traffic and we landed up being the ones that they had to stop the motorway traffic um, for like an hour while they put out the fire, our car was destroyed, just oh, insane, no. insane, and it was because we had put on the mist demister thing mm -hmm. and there was some electrical fault or something so we were standing next to the motorway just flames it was so so crazy and then on my way back uh just about scary things i was in the british airways it never happens we had an emergency landing so, oh, well, um, I, I was an air hostess yeah. so we had a few of those and i'm quite content with like knowing that everything will just be fine because those pilots are awesome I've had lots of landings where they said, oh, we've got to go back. There's a technical problem. Mm. This was a proper emergency. You have to know where the emergency exit is. You have to reread yeah. the safety instructions. It was crazy. Anyway. Yeah, well, anyway being a manual door opening device on airplanes. <laughs> manual door opening device on airplanes. That's what I was called. <laughs> safety <laughs> officer, my foot. Anyway, y'all know, so, I mean, I, I w must say that... Um, traveling down and back to Durban, well, to the south coast, which I've t I just got back, um, it wasn't too bad because I think, you know, of course, most of the bulk of the traffic holidays were over. They'd already, already traveled back. Um, and the highways are in, well, the N3 is in pretty good condition. But my goodness, the amount of trucks compared to previous years. And that's all because, of course, our railway system has gone for an absolute loop. So there are more trucks on the road, okay, which is like... Not carbon friendly, isn't great on the roads. Um, um, you know, it's just one of these ridiculous things because yeah. they can't use the railways anymore to get things from place to place. But on the whole, I know you're a, you're a, a KZNer, you're an Natal girl. <laughs> Yarra, I tell you what though, hey, those no. KZN <laughs> drivers are just the absolute pits. And considering Why? they have, considering they have the most hardcore people when it comes to trapping on the roads and that. You'd think that the KZN drivers would be lacquer. Aish, these people are not lacquer, eh? <laughs> what, are, you, they, are they fast, aggressive? They're too fast. What? They're too fast. They come right up behind you, um, even more so than the Gautenga Lenga Lengas. So, I mean, there were a few of those on the road as well. But on the whole, um, it was really peaceful driving on the road. So if you ever can, I'd suge suggest stay at home when everybody else is traveling and then go on holiday when they're not. That's the way so, to go. So did everybody else go back to school? It was this week, to, uh, two day, yesterday and the day before. Yeah, and then Cape Town, uh, the, the Western Cape, and uh, I think another province or two go back next week. Oh, okay. But I don't have to worry about that, obviously, anymore because my children are out of school, so that's all fabulous. Freedom, freedom. Yeah. But I do love it on Facebook where you just see all the South Africans posting photos of the first day of school. And, and I don't find that my, my friends in other countries do it as much. No, well, I, I was, my Facebook memories this morning was the, my twins on their first day of grade one running Aww. up the road on the cover of 
the I Citizen newspaper, that. which was just so lovely. It was such a sweet picture. Yeah, so, yeah, you have fond picture. memories of that, but quite frankly, I'm really glad I don't have to deal with that traffic in the morning. I, I don't do traffic anymore. I really do think it's the best thing. But, but staying home has become problematic. Let's get back to the load shedding. So, oh, yes. so we okay, arrived... So to, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we were arrived back... Um, Yesterday at about 8, so we missed the four-hour block load shedding, which had been going on, I think it was from 4 to 8 in our area. Then so it was four off hours means four hours of no electricity. Of no power in the whole area, right, unless you have a generator or solar or an inverter. Um, then it was off again from 12, uh, 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. Then it was off again this morning from 4 to 6. It's going off again today from 12 till 2, and then it's going to be off again tonight from 8 until 12. So that's okay, your 24-hour thing. Okay. That somehow, does, I, mean, I mean, I know it's crazy, but it doesn't sound as bad as what I thought. I thought some people were having like six hours in a row. No, I think four hours is the longest that you get. Unless, of course, what happens is that the power doesn't come back on again afterwards. But the biggest problem is, is that you cannot make any phone calls out from wherever you live because the... The cell phone networks just can't handle their batteries being depleted so much. So even though the power will come back on and the batteries start charging, there isn't enough power in them for you to be able to make like a normal cell phone call. So oh. <laughs> at, if, at least if you have Wi-Fi, you can make WhatsApp voice calls because you can't phone out. Um, and if, when you're out of power completely, um, you need to have an inverter to make sure that your Wi-Fi is still on because... There's just nothing that you can do. You can't phone out. You can't access the Internet. So, I mean, that's the biggest problem for a lot of people is that all the cell phone masts are going down because the batteries are getting completely hammered. They just don't, don't stand a chance, really. But you know what? There's so many positive things that we have to look forward to. It's a beautiful day in Johannesburg. The, it was a beautiful day down at the coast. We missed all of the rain that happened down there, so that was fantastic. Um, people are lekker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And um, I'm glad that um, I, went, I decided, made a decision to hire a car rather than try and drive my car down because I thought, well, I just don't want to break down on the side of the road. That's no. all. So, yes, you know, just be lekker, be kind, be patient, be one of those people that you'd like to have behaving that way towards you. Right, so uh, the sad things, of course, my goodness, this, um, this last week when it comes to people popping off this mortal coil with Jeff Beck, you know, the yeah, guitarist, know, um, know. Lisa Marie Pre Presley, yeah, yeah, yesterday. Shame. That's so sad. And she was, you know, in, in the last few days, yeah. And in the last few days, I've seen her so much because it was Elvis's birthday on the 8th of mm. January. So there were, uh, she was at Graceland with all the new thousands of fans mm. and um, since the movie. And then it was the Golden Globes two days ago. Uh, and she was there with Austin Butler, who won for Best Actor, because mm. he acted as Elvis. Um, so she's really been in the limelight the last few days. Mm. And then sh yesterday she had a, a heart, heart attack. attack. And then, of course, Harry Kutsia <laughs> as well. I mean, you know, the, the, yes. what, the only South African to win the World Heavyweight Championships. And Brian Mitchell, another one of our great boxers, I mean, he put up a lovely moving tribute to Harry today as well. Yeah, and I saw that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it just seems that, you know, so many people, not just older people, but uh, across the board. And for me, I can just say that my heart goes out to all of those that love them and their friends and family. Yeah, because I think uh, Harry only found out like a week ago that he had lung cancer. Yeah. So. And on cancer, of course, Mark Pilgrim, I'm sure you've been following the whole story of yes. one of our best DJs, radio DJs. And I mean, he's really fighting. And it is sad to see how, like, um, like really hectically cancer can affect people. And I love his honesty that he really yeah. is taking everyone with him, including other people that are fighting the same battle right mm. now. So, you know, he's not just the positive and pretend this isn't hard. He, he does post the hard photos too. Well, Marky Polka program, we're missing you. Get back on radio soon, okay? Get yourself up and running. <laughs> I'm, I do miss him on radio. I listen, he's the one person I listen to religiously Aww. in my car. Every He'll be back. Day. He will be back. We'll be yeah. back. He's the Terminator. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, just one thing. Did you hear about the fact that now Nursa, um, thanks ESCOM, wanting to put up the, how much is it? How many percent? 18.6% For a service increase. that they're not actually giving us. 
It is mad. I, mean, I heard this. I started snorting. I was busy filling up with <laughs> petrol and there was a whole bunch of people parked next to me. And I'm sitting and I heard this because I hadn't heard the news because the kids were playing like, you know, um, like their playlist from their phones. And I heard this coming up and I'm just like, well, they can just right off and like at the top of my voice and everybody in the petrol station is like looking at me like what <laughs> oh, I, know. I mean it is just crazy. crazy they're smoking their socks jenny okay let's get and on to stuff that's good okay. let's leave all of this horrible okay. stuff behind okay. 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 okay what news do you have for expats okay um a, 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 a shout out a call not a shout out a a call for some assistance please there okay. is a South African lady in South Africa who wants to remain anonymous, obviously, because she is arranging a surprise for her husband. Mm. Um, she loves him so much that part of her birthday project for him is having photos from all over the world. So to all the expats out there, um, particularly in Africa, actually, in other countries in Africa, but all around the world, if you can email or on what uh, on Facebook, you'll see the post, um, send us a photo of, of your country, something in your town or city, you know, that's a little bit, it shows us it's Australia, whatever, and write on it the exact words, my love for you is so big, it has reached Sydney, Nairobi, w whatever the town is. So we've already had some amazing pictures come in from all over the world. And um, anybody who's listening today, please go out and take a photo and send it immediately. I also want to do that. Do it, Mal. But I'm in do Joburg. It. Yeah, but it's not far not reach. Joburg. She's not in Joburg. Okay, so it is a reach. Okay, it is all right. A reach. It's not yeah. a reach for me to do it, but it's a, reach, a little reach. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we will remind Thank people. You. I'll go and share that on my personal feed as well. Um, then also, um, news from expats. Um, Miss South Africa, is she going to Miss Universe or Miss World this year? It's Miss Universe at the moment. Yeah. And she's, and it's the 71st one. She's already there. She's looking fantastic. The, the designs that she's wearing, the South African designers have done such a fabulous job. So it's really worth following her. They're in New Orleans and the big contest is tomorrow night. Uh, uh, sorry, is Saturday night, 14th of January. Well, it was interesting that this is coming up at this time because um, I popped into on my way back to visit um, a good friend, Gareth Pine James, who was the person who started Ituba in South Africa. I remember, we had the big letters all over the countryside, and we did that whole day of raising money um, for various charities. And then, of course, he started, he was the producer of Wish You Were Here, which was on television with Thompson Travel. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the photos he has there it was um, of a beauty queen. So I looked at this and I said, I wonder what's happened to Michelle McLean. Of course, she won Miss Universe, um, but she was Miss Namibia at the time. And then, of course, um, Margaret, who won Gardner. the very first Margaret Gardner, who won the first Miss uh, Universe. Um, I mean, the first South African to win Miss Universe. So I was like, we were talking about them, and then talking about various people, because of course he has just a wall of pictures of everybody, including not our swimming Sarah Ferguson, but the original Sarah <laughs> Ferguson. Okay, Fergie from not, not Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas, Fergie from being having ma been married to one of the royals. Um, so it was lovely, and then of course he he had a, a, a quite a few pictures of him with um, Tata Madiba. Oh, which is something I was going to talk about later. But oh, we can talk about it now. now. Yes, is that, um, I don't know if you've been to see the Whitney Houston movie yet. No. Oh, it was, it was just amazing because they really do highlight how she went to South Africa to sing when Nelson Mandela had been released, the Freedom Concert. Yes, and he um, called her his, his other daughter oh, or something, it's, yeah. It's so moving. So, so it was a bit of a surprise for me because, you know, I knew it was a biopic, but I, I didn't know that they would um, show so much of that footage. Of that. And yeah, it was, it was beautiful. I haven't seen Elvis. I haven't seen that. What I have been watching, though, and I was very fortunate where we were staying when there was a little bit of power because of catch up on um, DSTV, is yes. I've been watching the Dakar, which is one of the two sporting oh. events I do not miss. And of okay. course, well, I haven't watched yesterday's because I got back too late. Um, but 
so good to see the South Africans doing so well in the cars. Of course, Geniel de Villiers, like one of the stalwarts of it. I mean, having won it before, I follow Brian Baraguanath on yeah. Facebook, and he's doing so well, and Henny Latachang as well. The yeah. three of them, they were still in the top ten when I looked. I think they were at like four six and seven at one stage when I was looking. And I, I, I don't know her name. <clears throat> and I must look Landman. it up. The, the girl on the motorbike, the blonde. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness me, yeah. She's, she's doing so well. So she said, we've, we've got a special thing on today where mm. they've done a profile on her, a video profile on her with an interview w that we're going to be posting today. So look out for that. And she just said, you know, when she did it in 2020, she swore never again. Mm. But, um, but she's gone <laughs> back. She says every day when you cross that finishing line, she said it is so hard. She has cried, yeah. screamed, everything. She said it is so hard. But every day when you finish, when you cross the finishing line, it's like winning Olympic gold, just finishing that every single day. She said it is so rewarding. I could imagine you would have loved doing it. Well, actually, this is, I know, you know, one of my bucket list items is to go and do a, a, a barge on the canals in France to go oh, down on like a canal boat. That one I can easily do yes. with you. I'm just the sure other one the I decided <laughs> is I want to drive a truck in the Dakar. The trucks are my best thing. I absolutely love them. I think they're fantastic. Um, and like everybody thinks I'm completely crazy, but that's one of those things I'd like to do. But anyway, from crazy people to very wealthy people and very talented people, have you seen Charlize Tron? Everybody says, has this chick actually lost her mind? Because there's that video of her <laughs> doing a whole toilet. thing on, on the loo. <laughs> but, but you know what's the craziest thing? Is we reported on that video over 10 years ago. Yeah. It, it was an April Fool's joke 10 years ago, and for some reason, it feels like nobody in South Africa noticed. And well, now suddenly they're all talking about it, and now they yeah. realize, oh, it's, it's from, from 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. But it's but, the same um, thing. I mean, people send me things all the time, like the cover of the Scope magazine when it was um, Jane Hutton and myself and another girl who did the first Miss Hilbra on the cover of the Scope magazine. When I say I've had about 15 people sending me that photo, have you seen this? I'm like, yeah, it's been doing the rounds ever since Facebook started. Yeah, <laughs> so it's you one of those what, things. You know what I love? It's when um, you post a photo from like 30 years ago or something, and and I see people commenting, and they go, oh, Mal, you're looking so good. <laughs> Well, she is looking good. She's looking great, but you don't But I don't know. look the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I love it. They don't think we age. N I know, but I don't. Look at us. I mean, we still no, look no, fantastic. No, no, no. You look anyway. gorgeous. You look gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, on to Elon Musk as well. Didn't he just get a Guinness World Record for something? I know. How cool is that? He's broken the Guinness World Record, first person in history to lose so much money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so he lost $182 billion since November 2021. Um, he's, Was that from he's, Twitter? It's, it's not just Twitter. It's also, it's also Tesla, but Tesla has also been affected by, by Twitter. But, but the thing is, is when you look underneath the figures, Firstly, he's still mega wealthy. He's number two in the world now. He's got 138 billion, mm -hmm. so he can still buy us brunch. And he, um, I don't think he cares about how much, you know, about being the richest man in the world. I don't think that's his driving force, while it might be for some other people. Um, and Tesla, although Tesla's shares have dropped radically because the electric car business is, is has has some problems, you know, having enough outlets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. um, his his company Tesla is still the most successful um, car company in the world. So well, I, I don't know. I don't know who it was that put it up on Facebook or, or and on Twitter. Well, somebody had put this whole thing in like really nick 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 about um, Elon, and they, they just I think it was Peter Terry, one of our actors here in South Africa, who turned around and said, you know, instead of focusing on these these things okay why aren't you focusing on the fact that this man is actually like really kind of a, a role model because he's going for alternative energies for the lessening of carbon um, I think he should be getting into green hydrogen frankly and, and by the way there is a green hydrogen truck racing on the Dakar it's quite interesting although the Audis with their e-trons that's their electric cars haven't been faring as well the truck is still going which is great you know but that three of the South African made cars 
are all in first position. I, okay. I can't name them now, but just so that you yeah. know. Yeah, no, South Africans, when it comes to technology, um, and specifically with car technology, which is quite weird, I think we, we do very well. And I think that, I mean, Elon Musk has been amazing with what he has done and how he's trying to make the world a better place. Yeah. But, I mean, lo look at the way that people go after Greta Thunberg as well. So yeah, we won't yeah. get onto that whole thing. Apparently she's been house hunting in, in South Africa. <laughs> really? Somebody said somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but it's just somebody said somewhere. <laughs> so we're like, Yeah, because oh. she wouldn't care about the power cut. No, she would no, she'd be, be very happy. That's what the whole thing was about, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Elon Musk, I think we should ask him if he wants to sponsor our fabulous little show where we talk about all these fantastic things. <laughs> yes, and we've said such nice things about him. All right, so you have got a better idea of what's happening on the local good news because the only time I actually watched anything in the last week was when I was watching the Dakar. Um, and I haven't, I, apart from that, we had absolutely no um, connectivity. So I wasn't able to check on what was happening no, worldwide. So what good you. news have we got? Um, there's the Novo Youth Choir who've been invited. You know, they're from Limpopo. Mm. They became world famous on the America's Got Talent um, stage in 2019. And now they've been invited back for the All Stars show. So, oh, fantastic. Yes. And, and Simon Cowell, the, you know, the main judge, um, he said that this is the best of the best. They've gone back through the years and they've invited 60 of the acts from America and around the world. And our guys are, are one of them. So that's really exciting. So they'll, they'll be back there. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I just thought it was um, really inspiring. I don't know if you saw, we shared a video that Gary Player um, did an interview with a South African newspaper uh, or media outlet. And he was talking about his wife dying. And you know they were together for decades since mm -hmm. they were 13 and 14 years old. Um, and he was just saying how he could be sad now. You know, it is different to wake up in the morning and she's not next to him anymore. But, but he chooses with the time he has left to look on the positive and be grateful for mm. all the years that they did have together. So, um, so he's kind of turned it around and he said he knows that's what, you know, she would want. That's, that's mm. how they got so far because they had such a great positive attitude. Fantastic. I love mm, that. Yeah. And I see uh, you've got to hear about the piano girl. About older people, but oh. talking about older people, I don't know if you saw, there was an actress in Mia and the Lion. Um, I've just forgotten her name. Mia and the Lion, beautiful blonde actress. Um, it's on Showmax. Watch mm. it. And she's in Binalanders as well, which I think is also on Showmax. Anyway, her grandmother is 86 years old. She seriously looks 58 years old. And she just went for the celebrating New Year and everything. She just went skydiving. And she just looked <laughs> so cool. So, so cool. I love, I love these inspiring people. Um, very inspiring younger people is the piano girl. I saw that. Oh, my Isn't goodness. I actually, I, I put under there that, like, Somebody needs to give this child a bursary, and somebody else said, "Well, actually, it's somebody should give her brother who taught her how to play a bursary as well." It was fantastic piano and playing youngster of note. And do you know who taught her brother to play the piano? No. A YouTube video. No. Yeah. Well, my really my kids learn everything from YouTube. I mean, my child is like crocheting and making a business out of it. Making these beautiful crochet they dresses. Don't it's need fantastic. Parents anymore. <laughs> yeah, just teach them YouTube. You know, give them YouTube. There you go. Except, you know, you want to actually interact with them at some stage or another. But I must oh, say, when, when, when something scary happens at a home, like a, a light needs fixing or whatever, I, I do think YouTube's fabulous. Well, for that, yes, but then you still need mom when you stand on a bee or you get stung by a blue bottle in the sea. And, and then, of course, the best thing for a blue bottle sting is to have somebody we on you and my child wouldn't let me so there we go <laughs> <laughs> that's like that friends episode uh, oh. yes. <laughs> and and um mal are you a kevin hart fan comedian uh, no oh, okay i'm very specific with the comedy i like um so most of it i don't like <laughs> okay <laughs> well kevin hart just this morning has announced extra dates in south africa because uh, the dates he had for for February and it included Pretoria so that's why I thought you might be interested because you missed out on foreigner or something
I miss out on foreign and I'm probably going to yes. miss out on Sting as well because there were no more tickets left as well. And I'd love Aww. to go and see Sting. It's been very many years since I saw him in concert. Oh, well, mm. well, well, Kevin's going to be, he's got an extra Pretoria show and now he's going to Cape Town. And the tickets go on sale um, Friday 13th. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Yay. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Antarctic um, <gasps> Environmental Minister. What's going it's, on there? Um, that's Minister Creasy, and she is there. And um, her department is posting fabulous photos that we've got on SA People. Um, she's visiting the research station there. Yesterday, she was on the SA Agalas 2. You know, it's just gone over from mm. Cape Town. It's taken the South African team who work with an international um, team there doing all this research on the birds and the penguins and the weather and et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's really beautiful. They say that this year there are going to be over 100,000 visitors to Antarctica. Um, I, I won't be one of them. <coughs> no. I don't, <laughs> no. I don't do cold. No. <laughs> And talking mm. about women doing things all over the place, um, who is the first woman SAPS? Isn't it the SA? Is it SAPS? Yeah. Yes, yeah, SAPS. The South African Police Service. So, so they have the special task force that, mm -hmm. um, and they have a, a selection training program. Um, she's already been with the police for, excuse me, <coughs> at least ten years, and. Um, and she's now become the first woman to actually pass this program, which is just amazing because normally they make allowances for women. Um, and she said, no, she wanted to train with the best of the best. She wants to be equally good. And since she can do it, other women can do it. Uh, so it included parachuting. It's, your, it's the elite police officers in South Africa who will respond to terrorism threats to the huge... Um, the huge things that happen mm, mm. Um, and 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 you know surprisingly the South African Police Service actually has many women in top roles it's it's quite brilliant that they really do try for equality good and yeah. as it should be yeah. in this country specifically okay let's get on to stuff that's entertaining um, we've already mentioned the Whitney Houston movie um, Harry lived to lead. Let's not talk about that. I'd rather not. Uh, <laughs> it's, not what, it's just, a, it's, um, you know, um, Sia Khaleesi's story is, is so, so inspiring. And it's these, these documentaries, I think they're about like 30 minutes. So it's not like over an hour of your time. It's yeah. short, sharp, and, and it's really interesting what Sia Khaleesi says. You know, I've read so many articles about him but there's stuff he says in mm. this documentary that I did not know Sia yeah, I love Sia and, okay. and Albie yeah. Sachs as well Albie Sachs as well oh, you know? also Albie Sachs, he, he says something that I love which is um, you, people put so much emphasis on follow your dreams follow your dreams and, and, and it, can, it can unnerve people because they think oh my god I don't know what my dream is what should I be following and he said no follow your life and your dreams will follow you know, so in other words, be true to yourself and, and the dream will come. Because mm. that's what happened to him, basically. That's what I'm trying to instill in my children. Sure, well, make a YouTube show and they'll, and they'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should make the YouTube show. All right, so I see that you've got the list here of the top 10 shows on Showmax. Yes, and in the last, uh, for, so for 2022. Mm. Um, and I just thought it was very funny because the one that you didn't like, Sex and Afrikaans, was one of the 10 most watched series in 2022. Um, and we're really proud of Showmax. They did really well last year. The, mm, mm. I think, I think uh, this, the Showmax Pro, which does the sport and everything, grew by 110% subscribers doubled and and I look at it and I've got Netflix obviously and honestly Shamax chooses better stuff you, mm. you know you might have less but there's there's more quality so anyway there's there's Charlize Theron in Fast and Furious 9 that's mm. in the top 10 Euphoria mm. um, The Wife uh, mm. which um, South Africans abroad can also watch so 
heaps there. I didn't, oh, I didn't mention housewives because I know you don't want to watch that, but that's on as well. The, and then, the, the housewives from Pretoria. <laughs> Not that one, actually. It's the oh, German okay. one that's done so well. Oh, that one. Okay. Oh, and, and of course, I mean, I, I know that you're also kind of like, we're, we're completely obsessed with Donker Boss. Oh, tell me what's happening. Do we, do we have know. any clues yet? No, I'm, I haven't watched this week's one, so I'm going to be watching this uh, in the next day or two. I cannot wait. I am mm. loving this series. I'm telling everybody about it. It is just absolutely fantastic. It really is. Honestly, if you're a South African abroad listening now, I loved it. Lo- yeah. Or loved what I've watched so far. Now, I see you know, the hatchet wielding hitchhiker. Apparently, people are saying it's really good, but I haven't. I've just seen people posting about it. I know. I, I, you know, I only watched it because of Viv Fermark. Um, yes. Because you do a radio show with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Viv went off about how divine it was. And I watched it, and it is extremely quirky and a reflection of life. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth watching because it's also not too long. Okay. You know, some, some of these documentaries, they turn them into three part series, and it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh, is it a true story? It's a true story, and it's, it's about an hour and a bit. Um, okay. And it really happened. This, this guy became a worldwide phenomenon. Um, and the writing was on the wall right from the start. Okay, now I'm going to have to give that one a, yeah, a, lo- a gonna, watch, so yeah. I'll do that. Okay, so what have we got coming up on sapeople.com? What's the story for the coming week? Um, oh, a beautiful story of, of, of in Cape Town, people just coming together. Uh, a, a lady who had dementia went missing a couple of days ago. And it's, you know, volunteers, Cape Town um, official services, and everybody just searched and searched for her. Um, and must I spoil it? <laughs> she, she has been found. Okay, well, she that's, that's not spoiling it. We all know. It's always terrible to know, <laughs> never knowing yeah. if she's fine or not. <laughs> she is safe. And I think the most beautiful thing, and we've got a photo of it, um, the most beautiful thing is that her, her dog stayed with her the whole time. And when they found her, he's just lying so lovingly on, on her legs. Just really beautiful. Just, Aww. you know, watched over her. Because it was overnight, obviously, so she was, which would have also for her felt so much nicer having your dog there with you. Yeah, when you're so absolutely. Uh, talking about, uh, um, and this is slightly off topic, um, a friend of mine on the East Rand, their dog went missing about four months ago, and she's still looking for her dog. She puts up posts. She's got so many people over on the East Rand where he's been spotted, where people have been looking, where he's been, you know, and there's still people, so she's still looking for her dog, which I think is fantastic. So Aww, I'm going to send you that. He's a big dog. I don't know. He looks like a mixture <laughs> okay. between a St. Bernard and a something. I'll, se- I'll send okay. you the link. And All if right. you can put Perfect. it out for the people who might be on oh, the East Rand sure. watching, that would be great as well. Oh, and anybody else who lives on the East Rand ha- know, or knows somebody on the East Rand, ask them to be on our lookout if they follow. She's a, one of South Africa's top models as well. She was one of them, uh, Cindy McCabe. So keep an eye out for that as well. Jenny, it's always so lovely to see you. And hopefully we're going to have an absolutely fantastic year. Wish us luck on this whole debacle that's called the South African government. I mean, sorry, ESCOM. <laughs> um, and I'm, look, I mean, as I said, I'm, just just be lacquer. You know, there, there's very little we can do about it. I know that Kate Normington, who we talked to a little while ago on the show, and a couple of other people in thespians and people in the media are s- sort of, there's rumblings now about all of us going to do something. Um, and I, I think Joel and Van What Kulu, kind of who's, a thing? About, I don't know, um, they're still working it up, but um, John, you know, the, the Cabbage Bandit, who we've also spoken yes. to, yes. Um, he's also saying we need to go and c- when the SONA happens, you know, the State of the Nation address, mm-hmm. we need to disrupt that. In fact, everybody needs to turn off their radios, turn off their TVs, not watch it, not having anything to do it, and everybody should go to the union buildings in Pretoria and, ha- and stage a peaceful, quiet process with candles. So I think those kind of things are really good um, and because everybody's saying, what can we do? Yeah, yeah. Frankly, there's not much we can do. It's like, if you'll excuse the expression, it's farting against thunder. So the, the only thing we can do is to make, uh, you know, follow what Gandhi did, peaceful protests. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Okay, so you'll have details hopefully next week. I'll keep an eye on that one for you and let you know. And for everybody else, of course, you can let us know when you've got wonderful things happening in your life or anybody else that you know, uh, whether here in South Africa or abroad. I'm sure that Jenny would love some good news and some beautiful pictures. We always get them. I'm going to, I haven't sent you my beautiful pictures. I will. And the, and the picture, oh, you're pleased from the coast. Yeah, no, going down, we took a walk from the Wild Coast Sun down to the, I think it's the Mzumbi River. So basically from Umtambuna all the way down to Mzumbi. And there are these cave cliffs and, and full of fossils. Oh, divine. Which is lovely to see. You know, just near the, where the petrified forest used to be, unfortunately, that's pretty much all gone. But it was just fantastic. So share, okay, us, p- us, share us stuff. We love having things that are interesting and, you know, pertaining to you being a South African wherever you are. Roy Medina, of course, you must follow him in, in, in Portugal. He has some beautiful stuff that he pl- uh, puts up. And he's also ex-South African living in Portugal now, so his stuff's great. Awesome. We want you to do the same thing as him. And, of course, we want Jenny to keep on bringing us all those fantastic stories. Thank you very much, Jennifer Baxter. Thanks, Melanie Walker. I'll see <laughs> you next week. We'll catch you next week. Take care, everybody. And <laughs> goodbye.